everyone, my name is Eric Hopkins, a.k.a. Joe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So WWE this week has pretty much been the King of the Ring tournament and Queen of the Ring tournaments continuing on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, round one continued on SmackDown this past Friday, as well as the quarterfinals, uh, or round two, continued on Monday Night Raw this week. Uh, so let's get into that, uh, starting with SmackDown last week. Going into SmackDown, this is what the men's King of the Ring tournament bracket looked like. Uh, obviously, we knew that Kofi Kingston and Rey Mysterio would be wrestling over the weekend at a house show uh, on the Raw side. And then, of course, we got a slew of the brackets over here on SmackDown with AJ Styles versus Randy Orton, Baron Corbin versus Carmelo Hayes, LA Knight versus Santos Escobar, which also took place at a house show this uh, last weekend. And it was supposed to be Bob Bobby Lashley versus Tama Tonga in uh, round one of the King of the Ring tournament on SmackDown. But apparently due to injury, uh, Bobby Lashley was unable to compete and they substituted him uh, with uh, Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits. So uh, we're going to be getting that match on SmackDown as well. So uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, Fightful Select got these tournament brackets absolutely correct outside of the injury. So again, Hunter, sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> they're very credible. Uh, going on the SmackDown side for the women's uh bracket for the queen of the ring tournament we got naomi versus nia Jax, jade cargill versus piper niven uh michin versus tiffany stratton which took place at a house show this weekend and uh bianca belair versus candace larray uh obviously we had an injury to oscar going into the raw brackets last week uh seems like uh, the injury bug has been hitting wwe pretty hard here lately and i know they uh a lot of their fans love to give AEW flack about, oh, well, if AEW only had a performance center, they wouldn't, have be, they wouldn't be getting all these injuries all the time. Well, what's your excuse now? Uh, WWE, you know, injuries just happen everywhere, guys. It's just the way it is. It's not fair to criticize one company over the other because regardless of how you know much you train, how much you practice, how much you do all this stuff, injuries are going to occur no matter how good you get. It's just part of the gig. Uh, so cut, cut, cut both companies some slack, you know what I mean? After a recap video showing the events of WWE Backlash this last week, uh, Nick Aldis introduced Cody Rhodes, and Aldis informed him that his next challenger would be, in fact, Logan Paul. The social media star made his way to the ring and had an exchange with Cody Rhodes uh, that ended pretty much in no violence. So, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they kind of you know went back and forth a little bit there. But, again, just setting up the main event match for uh, King and Queen of the Ring in Saudi Arabia. Um, I don't necessarily... Look, at least uh, Logan Paul is is getting wins here. Uh, but again, if uh, you're going to criticize AEW for you know putting people in title matches without any story involved, this is a perfect example of that right here. Now, at least in this case, Logan Paul has got a lot of wins under his belt. He's held that United States Championship for a little while now. now the interesting thing to me about this though was they acted as if uh, you know it was going to be title for title. Cody Rhodes even mentioned the fact that he had never held the United States Championship here, and if he were to win the United States title, he would be a Grand Slam champion. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it at least appears it's going to be title for title. I don't know if they've officially announced that yet, uh, but, uh, yeah, it sounds like if that's the case, Cody Rhodes is winning both these belts here because you're not going to have Logan Paul go beat Cody Rhodes. It just sounds like one of those instances where uh, they're throwing opponents at – Cody Rhodes here, and uh, Logan Paul just happens to be the next victim uh, over the summer here but until whenever it is that The Rock decides to come back or Roman Reigns decides to come back. It it's starting to really feel like that the reports of uh, WWE not having a whole lot of plans for Cody Rhodes uh, going into the summer after he won the title at WrestleMania, which apparently they didn't originally plan to do. Uh, it sounds like uh, they are just kind of you know throwing some opponents at him. And again, this is the babyface effect. Uh, when you're a babyface champion, it's really hard to come up with good storylines and things uh, to uh, challenge the champion because the the thrill of the babyface is in the chase for the title. But once you win it, sometimes it's hard to make intriguing sto intriguing storylines for television uh, while you're the champion. It's really hard to you know ma maintain the audience's interest in a babyface champion. So uh, I, I think Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes here will have a great match in Saudi Arabia. Logan Paul has been outstanding in his very, very, very young WWE career here. But on the on the same on the same token, it doesn't feel like uh, maybe he would should be deserving of another world title shot after he lost to Roman Reigns last year. Uh, but again, uh, they're they're going to feed him to Cody Rhodes here. And I, it, if this is title for title, like I said, the U.S. Championship is going to Cody Rhodes. The only thing I can think of here is. Uh, maybe it's time for Logan Paul to drop the United States title if they were to do this. Uh, and then not only that, it's the American Nightmare holding the U.S. title. So I could maybe see them maybe 
I don't know if they would actually merge the titles, like put the U.S. championship, maybe retire it and kind of redesign the WWE championship belt to like kind of go back to the old winged eagle, kind of that American design of being the United States champion uh, in, in, the, in North America, that is. Uh, so I don't know if they were going to do something to that effect. Probably not. Maybe that's just my wishful thinking. But uh, it would make some sense for the American nightmare to hold the United States title. And it appears that maybe where they're going, if they, in fact, uh, say it's title for title for title. So, you know, for now, let's just uh, you call that speculation for now, because like I said, I don't recall them actually saying that on the program. Uh, but that's the implication that I got from listening to it. So we'll see what they do with it. If that's the case, I'm sure it'll be another good match. WWE's pay-per-views have been paying off pretty well, much like AEW's pay-per-views have been. Uh, sometimes their weekly television hasn't been the greatest uh, since WrestleMania, but and I thought this week was kind of on the lower end of it as well. I just didn't feel as, as entertained by WWE. Now, don't get me wrong. I was more thrilled with the matches that WWE was giving us this uh, last week when it comes to the King and Queen of the Ring tournament. Uh, but uh, for their normal... Uh, style of not doing the massive, you know, storylines and uh, big time promos and, you know, all that sort of thing. They really didn't do a whole lot of that on their shows. It was mostly in ring work, which I've been saying I want more of. So I'm happy that they're doing it. Uh, but I just feel like it, it just feels weird for WWE to be doing this. So maybe I'm just not used to it yet. So I, I fully admit that that may be why I didn't quite enjoy this week's shows as much. Uh, but all in all, I thought uh, setting up this main event for Saudi Arabia was pretty decent. So it is official. We are going to be getting Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul. We'll see about those titles, like I said, but either way, it should be a fun match uh, between these two guys who can both uh, put on a show. So I'm just looking forward to that. And of course, we got the announcement that next week on SmackDown, we will be getting the official contract signing uh, for their title match at uh, Saudi Arabia. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, last time we had a contract signing, which is uh, right before uh, the last pay-per-view at Backlash, uh, the Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles had no violence and you know had no had no problems it was a it was actually for once a normal contract signing so we'll see if we'll get that here uh, between Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes as well we'll have to wait and see until this Friday night of course as i said the queen and king of the ring tournaments continued as well uh so yeah i mean Lot, mostly, like I said, matches. Uh, we had uh, Naomi versus Nia Jackson round one. Nia Jax gets the win here. Uh, fairly uneventful bout between the two, but uh, it was highlighted by a couple of big spots from Naomi for sure. Uh, obviously, she always looks great for sure. Uh, but obviously, they wanted to set up Nia Jax versus Jade Cargill, in my opinion, which is a money match, in my opinion, for WWE uh, to put over Jade Cargill even further as a dominant force. And if she can uh, go through Piper Niven as she's going to do uh, on SmackDown as well. Uh, she and you put her against Nia Jax. Uh, Jay Cargill is going to be established as one of the heavy hitters on the SmackDown roster. So I think that's where they're going with it with the advancement of Nia Jax in round one. After Nia Jax advanced, we also got uh, Carmelo Hayes versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, who came back to the uh, main roster in the WWE draft this year, uh, actually looked rather impressive. I'm not going to lie to you. Looked a lot more improved after his time down there in NXT. But, of course, uh, they're not going to beat Carmelo Hayes again after losing to Cody Rhodes uh, a couple weeks back. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see that uh, Carmelo Hayes gets the uh, win here and advances in the tournament. But, like I said, Baron Corbin, I'm interested to see where he uh, takes this new babyface character. It was interesting to see him high-fiving the crowd and stuff when he come out to the ring. So uh, I'm, I'm at least intrigued with Baron Corbin this time around. Uh, let's see if uh, Hunter uh, can do a little bit with him more that, uh, than Vince McMahon was able to do. So we'll see what they've got going in store for him. But as for Carmelo Hayes, he is advancing in the King of the Ring tournament to the quarterfinals, which I'm assuming will take place this week on SmackDown, where I believe he will be facing Randy Orton in the quarterfinals. So we'll see what happens in that match as well. We also saw Jade Cargill versus Piper Niven, like I said. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jade Cargill looked impressive in this. Uh, she did some more selling in this than I've seen her do in recent memory. So that was good to see, no doubt about it. But the ending saw uh, Jade Cargill, who managed to get Piper up for the Jaded and score the win to advance to the tournament. Uh, it was rather quick, all things considered, but uh, it made uh, Jade Cargill look great for sure. Uh, as she was leaving and celebrating, she got Bianca Belair, who came out and celebrated with her in the, uh, in, in the rampway as Bianca was coming out for her match in the Queen of the Ring tournament, as Bianca faced uh, Candice LeRae, who uh, had a little help on the outside from Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell's actually been kind of, you know, falling in line with Candice LeRae a little bit, and kind of as Candice has taken her under her wing in the uh, dastardly ways of a heel here, and she was trying to help uh, Candice LeRae get the win as she was trying to, you know, attack Bianca Belair. She hit her knee. Uh, obviously, she's tried to help her win by cheating and things like that. Uh, but uh, the EST managed to get the upper hand, and despite interference from Hartwell, uh, the knee that was targeted gave out on her after a backflip, but uh, Candice LeRae pounced on it. After only a couple minutes, uh, 
Bianca Belair then hit the KOD for the win. Uh, pretty solid match, all things considered, but uh, didn't really have a whole lot of time to do much with it at all. The one thing about uh, some of these King of the Ring tournaments I could say is they've not been very long in length, in my opinion, especially the women's matches. I would like to see them maybe stretch those out a little bit longer, especially uh, once we don't have as many on the show each week. Once we get into the quarterfinals, uh, especially on Monday Night Raw, they had some time to do other matches that were not part of the tournament. Uh, so I'd like to see them maybe get like a little bit longer, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, a lot of the women's matches are a little bit less than that, obviously, so I'd like to see them expand on that. Uh, Hunter's doing a decent job of getting more uh, professional wrestling on the television show. So I'd like to see him continue to do that, but also make the matches a little bit longer, especially when it comes to some of the women's matches. No doubt about it. Following this, we had a bloodline segment in the back uh, that made it very clear that Solo Sokoa uh, is not telling the full truth here. Uh, he said that he had talked to Roman Reigns since WrestleMania, even though Paul Heyman had not. And uh, he said, according to the tribal chief, by order of the tribal chief, uh, Paul Heyman was to continue to be uh, Solo Sokoa's wise man. Uh, but clearly, Solo Sokoa is lying here, in my opinion. Either he's still trying to take the bloodline for his own and be the new leader, or he's getting orders from The Rock, who Solo Sokoa views as the true tribal chief. We'll just have to wait and see where this goes. Uh, but as per uh, plan here, it sounds like that's where we're going. Uh, as, as I've mentioned on my WWE recap shows each week before, uh, it sounds like we're getting the bloodline, the new bloodline, uh, Rock, uh, Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa, and maybe another member or two here down the line against Roman Reigns, the Usos, maybe Sami Zayn, uh, the reunited Usos and Sami Zayn possibly at Survivor Series War Games. That is what I would do. I hope that's what they do, bring in Jacob Fatu, possibly bring in Hikaleo as well, which has also got a uh, family relation here in this entire Bloodline storyline. So I'd love to see all that moving forward, and this is obviously a continuation of that. They're, again, they're trying to buy their time a little bit before we get to some of these major summer uh, pay-per-views like SummerSlam or PLEs, whatever you want to call them, like SummerSlam or Survivor Series coming up here in the fall. Either way, I can't wait to see where this goes. This is furthering that storyline. And whether or not we see Solo Sokoa turn on Paul Heyman, I don't know. That very well may happen. Maybe Paul Heyman takes a little time off as well and makes his return with Roman Reigns. We could possibly see that. I'm not totally sure just yet. Uh, but as of right now, Solo Sokoa is definitely uh, look like he's pulling all the strings here. And we'll see, we'll see where this goes. But I'm intrigued with it. Love where it's going. And I'm also kind of happy to see that the bloodline is not overtaking the title picture with Cody Rhodes at this point. I think it could Cody Rhodes could use a little bit of a break from the bloodline because obviously he will still be heavily involved with it down the line, I think, uh, especially after SummerSlam and Survivor Series uh, and then going into WrestleMania next year. Uh, you could possibly be getting some of that, but uh, I'm sure that the uh, Cody Rhodes, is, his, his uh, business is not finished with the bloodline, no doubt about it, as The Rock alluded to when he left uh, uh, about a month or so ago. After this, we had Angelo Dawkins taking the place of Bobby Lashley to face Tama Tonga in round one of the King of the Ring tournament. Tama Tonga was caught off guard by Dawkins. It ended up taking a lot of damage in this match. Uh, when Solo Sokoa got on the apron, Dawkins slapped the taste out of his mouth, and Montez Ford took him and Tonga Loa out with the dive. Uh, as Dawkins watched Loa and Sokoa take out his partner, uh, Tama Tonga was able to hit his finisher for the win. The two minutes of action we got was actually pretty great, uh, but there just wasn't enough of it. As I mentioned earlier, it just felt like uh, it was kind of rushed on this show. I understand we got a lot of round one matches to get through here, but I just would like to see a little bit more time, especially when uh, you've got, I mean, obviously you, you didn't have uh, Bobby Lashley like you originally intended, so you probably didn't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, knowing everybody in the building, knowing that Tama Tonga was going to advance over Angelo Dawkins here for sure. Uh, so yeah, especially once uh, uh, Dawkins got the jobber entrance when he didn't even get a full entrance. So uh, that was definitely a thing. But uh, yeah, I just felt like it could have been much longer. Uh, but I understand why you also cut it because of the fact that you didn't have Bobby Lashley as you originally planned. And to round out SmackDown, we got the main event, of course, saw AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. This is probably the best match on the show as it you know should be on paper, no doubt. They had the last 20 minutes of the show to work, so they took their time during their entrances. These two veterans did a great job making this feel competitive while highlighting what makes each one of them special here. Uh, Orton sold a knee injury like he was never going to walk again in this match. Uh, AJ Styles was bumping all over the place for Randy as well. Uh, this was easily the best match of the night because they had enough time to do everything they wanted to do without rushing it. So again, if you give these guys more time, they'll have better matches, no doubt about it. I under Like I said, I understand you had to get through a lot of the round one stuff, so I'm not going to criticize it too badly here. Uh, but uh, after a long struggle, uh, Randy Orton hit his patented RKO to score the win here. Uh, it was it was really nice to see how, you know, both these guys seem to kind of know each other's stuff. Uh, again, veteran stuff here. I really enjoyed what they did in the ring. I'd give it a solid B plus or, you know, probably close to an A. Uh, so, yeah, this is one of the best things they've did, done in the tournament so far, and I was happy to see it. Uh, again, interesting. I just don't know exactly what they're going to do with AJ Styles here. I know he's kind of out that 
uh, back down to his career here. But at the same time, uh, you know, they were setting him up to be, you know, get back on track after uh, WrestleMania. And then, of course, of course, he goes up against Cody Rhodes, loses. Now he goes in the King of the Ring tournament, loses. So I don't know what they're doing here with AJ Styles. But and Randy Orton, sounds like they're setting him up to possibly lose in round two to Carmelo Hayes. We'll see where that goes. But that could be an intriguing matchup for SmackDown this week. So I'm looking forward to see uh, where they go in that quarterfinal matchup. But, uh, yeah, we could possibly even be getting Randy Orton end up in the semifinals, uh, possibly against L.A. Knight. Uh, that's a possibility because apparently over the weekend, L.A. Knight advanced in the King of the Ring tournament as well as Tiffany Stratton. She also advanced. And at the house shows, we also saw Kofi Kingston advance as well as we got the advancement of Shayna Baszler as well. Both have, uh, ended up uh, going on to their matches in the quarterfinals on Monday Night Raw this week. Obviously, I kind of predicted Kofi Kingston would probably advance the tournament, setting up the match with Gunther uh, that uh, Xavier Woods was unable to do. They've been doing this uh, storyline with uh, Xavier Woods and the New Day against uh, Gunther and, and Imperium. Uh, so it was cool to see that they're going to be following up that on uh, Monday Night Raw with Kofi Kingston. I thought they had a good match with the two of them, so I was happy to see that. And then, of course, Shayna Baszler advancing as well. So, uh, yeah, I Again, I wasn't a big fan of not seeing some of these matches on the uh, main shows here, and they put them on the house shows. But at the same time, it's fun for the people who go to the house shows to have something with some stakes to it. The house shows are a lot of fun. If you've never been to a WWE house show, I do recommend it because they do a lot of things more for the crowd. They play to the crowd a lot more because it's not being – film per se i mean it is but it's not going to go on television outside of maybe some highlights here and there if there's an injury or something they might tell us about it uh but it's really fun to just kind of have uh, the interaction just one-on-one -on -one with them and the crowd and not worrying about the audience at home so i highly recommend you go watch them if you never have uh but it was kind of cool i guess for them to put some of this on the house show i guess even though it sucks for those of us at home who didn't get to watch the match but at the same time you know, there was so much to do in round one on, you know, Raw and SmackDown last week that they had to get it in. So I could kind of understand why they pushed it over to a house show. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that over the last few weeks, they have still continued to do the QR codes and the subtle teases for Uncle Howdy and his big return, uh, obviously paying homage to Bray Wyatt and Wyndham Rotunda's legacy here. Uh, it sounds like we're still going to be getting him uh, coming back to WWE, but I've not been really mentioning it the last few weeks because it's mostly just been QR codes and little hints and teases, uh, but I just wanted to uh, mention that it is still going on, and of course, we are going to be getting the return of Uncle Howdy sooner rather than later. This led us to Monday Night Raw that kicked off with Drew McIntyre in the ring. Uh, wasted, he wasted little time uh, blaming everyone from CM Punk to Jey Uso to the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest for all of his shortcomings over the last two months. Uh, I, I ain't going to lie. I, I love the stuff that he's done doing with CM Punk, even though Punk is not normally there sometimes. And I get it. You know, neither guy is 100% healthy at this point. Uh, but whenever this uh, match does take place, like I've said it's going to be one of the better feuds they've got on uh, WWE television right now. And it's kind of ironic that one of the best futures they've got going on is involving two guys who's not even really able to be on the show right now. They're the two guys who have the best storyline on both brands right now, in my opinion. Uh, Drew McIntyre and CM Punk's the stuff they're doing on social media to uh, just in the ring, you know, or, you know, just kind of passing each other uh, last week on Raw or whatnot. Uh, it's, it's just the best storytelling they're doing. And uh, I ain't going to lie, I'm looking forward to seeing it whenever they do get uh, – Heel, though, even though all the stuff that Drew McIntyre is seeing, I really want to see him kick CM Punk's ass. It could be a lot of fun. Uh, but that and that, that notwithstanding here, uh, Damian Priest uh, came out to answer uh, Drew McIntyre here. Uh, Priest was the only superstar to step up to Drew McIntyre, uh, calling him uh, out and uh, it's, it's for not taking responsibility for his losses and disappointments. He then responded to uh, the Scottish Warrior referring to him as a paper champion by accepting his challenge for a match and valued to make him eat his words. So it sounds like Damian Priest is going to give Drew McIntyre a World Heavyweight Championship match. I really like the fact that Damian Priest called out the fact that the reason why he's champion right now and Drew McIntyre is not is because every time uh, Damian Priest tried to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase over the last few months before WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre stopped him so Drew McIntyre could get uh, the one-on-one -on -one match with Seth Rollins. But to had, you know... Da or Damian Priest said had he uh, been allowed to actually cash in on Seth Rollins, that Damian Priest could have fought Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania, and none of this would have happened to Drew McIntyre. And not only that, that Drew McIntyre, after winning the world title at WrestleMania, had all of his focus on his family and CM Punk, that he wasn't paying attention to Damian Priest, and that enabled him to win the title. So I like that this has all kind of been brewing even before Damian Priest won the World Heavyweight Championship here. So again, this is probably the second best story that they got going on right now. And this all came from just this one promo. This was highly entertaining, in my opinion. Very solid opening to the show. It presented the world champion as a babyface here, which is definitely where they're going with Damian Priest, I think. 
uh, that, that's definitely been heading that way with the Judgment Day for a while, and they even continued a little bit on this show uh, in regards to their potential breakup. Uh, but uh, especially since the fact that he didn't want the inter- interference between uh, the Judgment Day uh, at Backlash when he defeated Jay Uso. Uh, so if that is the case, uh, or if even Damian, Pri- Damian Priest assumes more of a tweener role, it will freshen up his character a little bit. It was only scratched the surface of what he is capable of in the role of the champion. Now, if they do this match in Saudi Arabia, I don't think Drew McIntyre is winning the title there. However, Clash at the Castle is right around the corner after King and Queen of the Ring. Uh, so we could be getting that uh, as early as next month. So I still think Drew McIntyre is eventually going to win this world title. Uh, I, I mean, at the, at the same time, though, this stuff, this back and forth that uh, Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest here, I, I'm starting to buy Damian Priest more as a world heavyweight champion here. Uh, then, of course, I love the line where Damian Priest uh, shot back and said, find a mirror, look at the reflection, and blame the asshole that's in the mirror. Uh, so, again, good stuff between these two guys. I'm looking forward to this match now just on this one promo alone. So I'm excited to see where they do it. I'm hoping it'll be in Saudi Arabia at King and Queen of the Ring. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, like I said, though, I don't expect uh, Drew McIntyre to win the title just yet. Maybe it clashed the castle since it's in uh, his home country. Uh, but at the same time, wouldn't be surprised if Damian Priest holds on to it as well. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre don't need the world title for their feud. It probably benefits Damian Priest to hold the belt even longer here and somehow get a win over Drew McIntyre. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that happens if uh, he gets help from Judgment Day. He obviously does not want that help. So that could be a little more of a wrinkle into furthering the division between the group as well as the breakup of Damian from the group as a whole uh, coming up down the line here before we know it. We got the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament uh, kicked off here with EO Sky versus Shayna Baszler. Uh, so, yeah, I thought they had a decent match uh, for the first night, match of the night. EO Sky weathered the punishing offense of her opponent. She even got jumped before the match even started. EO Sky seemingly had a counter for just about everything that Shayna Baszler threw at her. Uh, and she eventually put her away with the over the moon salt, which is absolutely beautiful, by the way. And they even hit it uh, from an uh, overhead camera. So I thought it was a really good shot. Uh, so, absolutely great. Good to see EO Sky advance. It looks like she's on her comeback trail after losing the WWE Women's Championship to Bailey. I could definitely see EO Sky versus Becky Lynch at some point here before too much longer. And I wouldn't even be surprised if EO Sky wins the Queen of the Ring here. She would probably be one of the uh, better contenders in my opinion for this crown and i'm not going to lie this crown looks absolutely outstanding uh these crowns that they've uh, put some good work into this year they look absolutely great especially this women's crown here so i'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing with it uh it obviously looks like uh, it's made for eo sky here in this uh picture here so i i'm starting to think that eo sky may be my favorite to actually win outside of maybe jade cargo i don't know who's going to defeat Jade or Bianca, we very well could get Jade and Bianca in the semifinals for the SmackDown brand and Jade Cargill moving on to the finals here. It'll be interesting to see if those two tag teams champions uh, end up uh, wrestling each other in the semifinals on the SmackDown side, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what they do. But EO Sky is definitely in my uh, contention to make the finals at uh, Saudi Arabia. Early on in the night, we got a backstage segment with uh, the Judgment Day with Carlito. Uh, Carlito is still trying to get under the good graces of Damian Priest here, but Damian Priest just is not having it after he cost him his match against Bad Bunny last year at Backlash. Uh, so I understand where Damian Priest is coming from. He just doesn't trust Carlito. Uh, but obviously, Dominic has a personal vendetta against his father, Rey Mysterio. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. Uh, but uh, And obviously, Dominic Mysterio is also hurt. So again, the injury bug just kind of, uh, you know, rearing its ugly head here in WWE as of late. Uh, but uh, yeah, so at least uh, Carlito is doing his best to get, uh, get under the good graces of Damian Priest. He does a little good job of that a little bit later on in the show. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens there in the fatal four-way match for the tag team number one contendership uh, on Monday Night Raw for the World Tag Team Championships. Uh, so yeah, interested to see where they go with this. Uh, but uh, again, it's just kind of furthering that storyline uh, with the with the, with the the stuff with the Judgment Day and kind of crumbling all around them. So uh, interested to see where it goes. We got Gunther advancing in the King of the Ring tournament as he defeated Kofi Kingston here. This was a very fun match, no doubt about it here. It should surprise no one at this point, but this was another show stealer from Gunther, uh, who was far too often left out of the conversation for best wrestler in the world. He is top five in the world, in my opinion, no doubt about it. Um, and, and, I, and him and Ilya Dragunov both on the WWE roster is probably two of their best wrestlers at this point when it comes to in-ring product. Uh, they need more people with this sort of talent. And I understand some people are going to be like, well, you know, his character is not that great. He's just a, you know, he's just a good wrestler. That's all you really need sometimes when you got a guy who's as good as Gunther is, especially with those chops. Holy cow. And, and he's more than just chops, by the way. He's outstanding. Him and Ilya Dragunov both had some great matches, especially in NXT UK uh, and things like that and, and the NXT brand. 
Uh, so yeah, if you're if you're not familiar with these two guys, get familiar. They're going to be uh, mainstays on the main roster for a long time because I believe Triple H is very high on both guys. And as I've stated before, uh, Gunther is my pick to win the King of the Ring tournament until he's beaten. He is going to continue to be my pick. Uh, so uh, here we go, and he's already advanced to the semifinals now, the final four uh, going into the pay per view or the PLE in Saudi Arabia. So yeah, uh, again and, and again, I, I like the fact that you know Kofi Kingston wouldn't go down without a fight here, uh, but of course uh, you know Gunther gets the better of him in the end here and he uh, beats him with a boston crab uh, much like he did his opponent last week so again just it looks like uh, gunther's got nobody left to go through in the new day unless Big E decides to make a return at some point uh, which i've heard wwe is kind of leaving up to him if i'm not mistaken so uh but yeah i mean i'm looking forward to seeing wherever this goes and i'm very excited to see the match next week on monday night raw in the semifinals but we'll get into that once we get into the main event segment Backstage, we had a segment where Chad Gable continued to berate and mistreat the Alpha Academy teammates before revealing that Otis will battle Sami Zayn and Akira Tozawa uh, will square off with Big Bronson Reed tonight. Uh, he then expressed interest in training Ivy Nile uh, while further insulting Maxine Dupree. So again, just kind of furthering the storyline that uh, Chad Gable is, uh, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing his teammates to be better. And at some point, either they're going to break away from him or they're going to actually get better. We're going to have to wait and see where the storyline goes. But I got a feeling at some point Chad Gable is going to probably get jumped by all of them at some point and be left high and dry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, especially a guy like Otis has got all the talent in the world. Uh, uh, Akira Tozawa and Maxine Dupree probably still need a little bit of work, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I'm just loving this character with Chad Gable. He's being a giant uh, douchebag all, all the way around, and that's the way he should be at this point. And I'm looking forward to seeing where they're going with Chad Gable, possibly winning the Intercontinental title at King and Queen of the Rings. So we'll have to wait and see. We got a really sweet moment here when we had the uh, current Raw announcer, Samantha Irvin, introduce us to the past Raw ring announcer, Lillian Garcia. So it was good to see Lillian here. Uh, obviously, it looked like you know, she just was riding a bike, as Pat McAfee said on, uh, on, on, on commentary, just fit right back into the, into the role here as she introduced the next match. So it was good to see her here. I don't know exactly what she was doing here, but it was a nice passing of the torch moment between these two ladies. Uh, obviously WWE also recently, uh, you know, brought a, a young lady up for their SmackDown, uh, announcer role as well. So good to see that. Uh, I can't wait to see what these young ladies do. Uh, they're doing a great job over there, especially Samantha Irvin. If you've not I heard her do a lot of announcing. Uh, definitely check her out, especially some of her reaction videos that are on uh, on social media and stuff uh, where she's reacting to some of the stuff in the ring because it sounds like obviously she has no idea where the story is going. She just does the in-ring calls. So, yeah, I, I like all that, and I love to see all that. Uh, so I'm glad to see what they're doing with these ladies, and uh, good to see Lillian Garcia. Big Bronson Reed and Chad Gable will challenge Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship at King and Queen of the Ring in Jeddah on May 25th. Uh, but first, uh, he battled Akira Tozawa in a singles match. Uh, it went as one would absolutely expect. Bronson Reed squashed Tozawa as uh, Akira Tozawa stopped listening to Chad Gable mid-match as Chad Gable kept jumping up around. You know, at first, it went kind of well. He was doing pretty good, and Chad was on the outside going, yeah, I taught him that. I taught him that. And then once it started to go south and Ch uh, Akira Tozawa wasn't listening to Chad, uh, he started saying, I didn't teach him that. I didn't teach him that. It was what are you doing, you idiot? You're a moron. And this was some great stuff here from Chad Gable, no doubt about it. But kind of unnecessary, but it felt like, again, they were trying to fill some time building Bronson Reed up for the Intercontinental Championship match at Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, but uh, we already know that Bronson Reed's a little bit unstoppable, so I don't know exactly what this was for other than the fact that they were trying to get Bronson Reed over. And, of course, further the storyline between Akira Tozawa and Chad Gable. That's about all it was for here. But a typical squash match, Bronson Reed uh, wins very handily here. We had a segment backstage with uh, the Miz and R-Truth, Awesome Truth, uh, discussing uh, their World Tag Team Championships with uh, Adam Pearce, and that, of course, uh, brought in Kiana James. Kiana James uh, was drafted up from NXT. This was her first experience on Monday Night Raw on television, so good to see her here. We'll be interested to see where she goes. As uh, uh, Emperor Palpatine once said to Anakin Skywalker, we'll watch your career with great interest. So, yes, yeah, so it's good to see her here. Uh, welcome to Monday Night Raw. Speaking of Adam Pierce backstage, we also had a segment with uh, Braun Breaker, who was still acting like he wasn't thrilled that he was not a part of the King of the Ring tournament. Uh, Adam Pierce at least tried to explain why he wasn't a part of the King of the Ring tournament. He said there's a lot of guys on his roster that have earned their spots in the tournament, and uh, Braun Breaker has not done so yet on the main roster. Uh, Braun Breaker didn't seem too uh, happy with that, and he wasn't taking too kindly to it. So we'll see where they go with that. And obviously, Breaker and Adam Pierce are already button heads on the main roster. We also had a backstage segment where Kofi Kingston was uh, – 
alien from his match with Gunther and Karrion Cross come up to him and said, there's always time to turn things around. And then he kind of walked off. Uh, so yeah, not sure exactly what that meant. I don't know if they're going to maybe t- kind of tease a breakup with the new day. I highly doubt it, but it sounds like we're probably going to be getting the new day against uh, Karrion Cross and uh, the AOP and uh, the final Testament here. Interesting to see where that goes, unless Big E is coming back because it's a three man stable. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, yeah, it sounds like they could be setting up something for those both those teams to do to kind of kill time on Monday Night Raw, unfortunately, because outside of that, it's really got no purpose other than maybe if Big E does return. So we'll have to wait and see, uh, but uh, very possible. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Former NXT Women's Champion Lyra Valkyria made it 2-0 on the main roster as she defeated Zoe Stark in the quarterfinal round match on Monday Night Raw. Uh, So yeah, Valkyria continues to look like a star, a testament to her hard work and the connection she forged with the audience during her time in NXT. This is a great example of how her style uh, lends itself to strong matches with women of different styles and backgrounds. Uh, So, yeah, I'm excited to see where they're taking Lyra Valkyria, no doubt about it here. Uh, But she's going to be going up against uh, EO Sky. So, again, I mean, they're they're very high on uh, Lyra Valkyria. As much as I I think uh, EO Sky will probably win this match, I would not actually be stunned if uh, Lyra Valkyria actually gets the upset win here and advances in the the Queen of the Ring tournament. Uh, So, yes, we'll have to just wait and see what they do with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and not only that, she's getting kind of over with the fans, especially when she comes out and helps Becky Lynch and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly where they're going with Lyra, but they seem to be very, very excited about her. And uh, I'm starting to get excited about her as well. So uh, interesting to see. But uh, yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing so far. We got Sami Zayn versus Otis here. Of course, more loudmouth Chad Chad Gable berating the big man while he was in the ring. Uh, definitely distracted the big guy and allowed uh, Sami Zayn uh, to deliver the haluva kick for the victory. And of course, after the match, uh, Chad Gable continued to berate Otis, going as far as to slap him across the face. Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, instead of divorcing himself from the Alpha Academy, Otis basically just uh, followed his coach to the back, you know, being, uh, you know, belittled here. Uh, but uh, yeah, at some point, I just feel like Otis is going to squash Chad Gable here and get, and uh, Chad will get what's coming to him. But uh, if they book it correctly, Otis could actually be one of the bigger baby faces in the company, kind of like what he was when he was with Mandy Rose all those times. If they book it right and he absolutely squashes Chad Gable here, they could actually do a one-on-one feud between the two guys. Uh, and it could be a lot of fun going down the line, especially if Chad Gable does not win the uh, Intercontinental title. Or even if he does, they could do an Intercontinental title feud between Otis and build him back up as a single star, no doubt. And that would be a lot of fun. Uh, so I don't know exactly where they're going to go with it. But either way, it's leading to a breakup and Chad Gable becoming the full-blown uh, one singles competitor here as a heel without the, uh, the, the, the extra baggage of the Alpha Academy, in my opinion. And that right there is a thing to be excited about because Chad Gable, as I said, is very underrated, very talented, and he should be uh, pushed uh, straight to at least the upper mid card at this point. And eventually you keep building him and building him and building him and you can put him into the main event level. We got an underrated match between uh, Becky Lynch and Dakota Kai, which I believe was their first ever meeting in a WWE uh, main roster ring for sure, and maybe even uh, ever in my opinion. Uh, But uh, it was a very back-and-forth match that climaxed with the man trapping Dakota Kai in an arm breaker, only for Io Sky and Kyrie Sane to get involved here, which kind of sucked. But she, of course, uh, beat down Becky Lynch after the match was over. And that brought out Lyra Valkyria, obviously, who uh, came out to make the save with Becky Lynch, who obviously uh, Lyra Valkyria was kind of looking for Io Sky as she will be wrestling her in the semifinals next week, probably on Monday Night Raw. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, it was good to see Lyra Valkyria out here doing the babyface thing. After Lyra Valkyria made the save on Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan appeared out of nowhere and uh, sent Becky Lynch into the ring post, and Liv Morgan escaped to the arena floor uh, before Lyra Valkyria could get her hands on her here. Uh, They were definitely playing up his storyline that uh, Liv Morgan loves to attack people from behind when they're not looking. This all stemmed from a segment earlier on in the show uh, where Becky Lynch approached uh, Liv Morgan and then called her out for basically jumping people for when they're not looking. And Becky Lynch said that she's not afraid to go face to face with whoever she's wrestling here. Uh, Obviously, a big callback to a moment they had a long time ago. Uh, History definitely repeated itself here. I think Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch are going to have a great uh, women's world championship match here, whatever that does happen here down the line here. And again, like I said many times too, uh, that Liv Morgan is probably going to win the women's world championship before Rhea Ripley comes back. But uh, I don't know if I necessarily see her winning it right away, unless Becky Lynch does uh, decide she wants to take that vacation that she was planning before she ended up having to win the title here. Maybe she is a transitional champion this time around. And, of course, Becky Lynch's contract with WWE is currently about to expire. However, I fully expect Becky Lynch will be resigning, much like Seth Rollins did recently. Uh, but at the same time, uh, as of right now, they have no contract. So they very well could take the title off Becky Lynch in Saudi Arabia uh, just to kind of, just in case she wasn't to resign. But, again, with, I have no doubt in my mind that she'll be returning to the company, no doubt about it. 
before the tag team number one contenders match, we had a backstage segment where JD McDonough warned Braun Strowman to stay out of Judgment Day's business after he kind of got in, you know, in their business a little bit with the whole Patrick Mahomes thing. And uh, of course, uh, you know, Monster Among Man did not look uh, a little uh, the slightest bit intimidated by JD McDonough. But either way, the warning has been sent out to Braun Strowman. We'll see where that goes. Uh, but uh, of course, we had a tag team number one's contenders match here. Uh, saw the New Catch Republic, uh, the Judgment Days, uh, Finn Balor and D- uh, JD McDonough, the Creed Brothers, and the Authors of Pain battle it out on the night's uh, penultimate match for the right to challenge Awesome Truth for the World Tag Team Titles here. And this match uh, was actually a lot of fun to watch. Uh, there's, you know, I thought it was a, a, a very entertaining match, I should say, uh, one of the better matches they had on Monday Night Raw. But of course, it had to end with some tomfoolery uh, with uh, Carlito, uh, you know, attacking. Uh, some other members of the other teams and of course uh, helping uh, the judgment day get the victory here so again just kind of furthering the whole storyline that uh, Carlito is trying to win over the good graces of uh, Damian Priest no doubt about it here but uh, yeah uh, what what that means uh, for him in pursuit of a you scratch my back I'll scratch yours arrangement with Damian Priest uh, remains to be seen but it at least appears that uh, Carlito won over JD McDonough and Finn Balor here so we'll see where this goes in the future but for now good good storyline development I like what they did there would I have preferred uh, the match actually end clean? Absolutely. Uh, I feel like WWE a lot of times likes to do this thing where they try to do too much, uh, you know, no contests or too many DQs or too many interferences or the bloodline has to get involved with Roman Reigns or, you know, I feel like they do a little too much of that. Now, don't get me wrong. All wrestling does that to a degree. I just feel like in WWE, we get a lot more of that than clear cut winners a lot of times. Uh, and I and I understand that though. There's it's a way to not pin somebody or not give someone a straight up loss. Uh, but sometimes I think you just need to necessarily need to do it. And in this case, I think there's enough tag teams to take the pinfall that you could have easily done it. But at least in this case, it makes sense uh, for the storyline they're telling with Carlito. This, of course, led to the main event of Monday Night Raw that saw Jay Uso come out. Uh, he's got this new thing that, that, that they're, they're continuing now after the uh, the, the France crowd over there uh, in Lyon, France, uh, started doing with the lights and stuff while they were doing the yeet. Uh, they were also moving their, their lights on their cell phone. Uh, a part of me feels a little torn about this. I'm, you might kind of can tell where I'm going with this here, but uh, especially when uh, – Jay Uso, I think, went out on uh, social media and said that he is now the yeeter of worlds, uh, calling to, of course, the you know, comparisons and the parallels to Bray Wyatt's Fireflies. Part of me kind of wants to see the Fireflies still reserved for maybe like Uncle Howdy. It just depends on what the uh, plans are for Uncle Howdy and whether or not he's going to kind of use the same sort of interests that Bray Wyatt would do or whatnot. I don't know. Uh, but if that's the case, I kind of feel like the Fireflies should be reserved for that character and Bray Wyatt's legacy. Uh, but at the same time, it actually looks great with Jey Uso. I just feel like Jey Uso's got all these like strobe lights and things like that, that you don't necessarily need to do that here. But at the same time, it got over in France, so it, 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 it was natural that the France cr- uh crowd actually implemented here so in that regard a lot of times going with the flow and doing what's natural for the for the character here is great so in that regard i'm, I'm glad to see that for jay uso he is over as as all heck boy i tell you right now if they ever put the title on jay uso or let him win the kick of the ring tournament i'm not going to be upset about it i still think his in ring skills could improve a little bit but the character is over and by in that regard i wouldn't be surprised if somehow he does get past gunther next week on, next week on raw uh be interested to see how that might happen uh, but at the same time if they if they crown him i wouldn't be surprised and i wouldn't be upset about it either so the main event saw Jay Uso in the quarterfinals against Ilya Dragunov. Uh, definitely a great match on paper, no doubt about it. I thought these guys had a really fun match, all things considered. Well, it sounds like even though we got a little bit of a tease of it earlier on, we will not be seeing Gunther and Ilya Dragunov rekindle their rivalry in the semifinals of the King of the Ring tournament. Uh, thanks to main event Jay Uso, who defeated uh, the Mad Dragon here in a phenomenal headliner on Monday Night Raw. Uh, Dragunov uh, lost nothing in defeat, having delivered the same tenacity and hard-hitting offense. That is his trademark of his in-ring work. Uh, he was great, clearly the better wrestler in the match, though. Uh, as uh, Jay Uso, though, caught him with a spear late and delivered the Uso splash to secure the win and set up the rematch with uh, Gunther on next week's show. If you remember, uh, Jay Uso lost a match against uh, Gunther before uh, for the Intercontinental Championship, thanks to his brother Jimmy. Uh, but uh, with Jimmy now out of the picture, it'll be interesting to see if uh, WWE capitalizes on uh, Jay Uso's popularity and books him in the finals, or if Gunther rolls into Saudi Arabia one step closer to claiming his crown here. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the uh, semifinals on Monday Night Raw next week. Gunther versus Jay Uso should be a lot of fun. Should be a good match. Uh, I, I, I'm still going to stick with my pick, Gunther, to win. Uh, Jay Uso, I don't know exactly how they're going to explain uh, him not advancing. But like I said, either one of these guys could advance and be just, just fine in the finals, no doubt about it. I just feel like uh, it's Gunther's time. And until uh, he's defeated, like I said, I'm going to stick to the pick I had originally. But I'm looking forward to seeing where they're going with that. So in that regard, 
uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good match next week on Monday Night Raw. A good headline uh, for the main event of the show next week, I think, in my opinion. It just has potential on paper. I mean, uh, even though I don't feel like Jay Uso has the greatest in ring skills, I think Guther will definitely bring him to a good match. Guther has good matches with everybody, and Jay Uso can sell pretty well. So I just, like I said before, like at, like at the WrestleMania match with him and Jimmy Uso, I feel like that Jay Uso and Jimmy, for that matter, both need to kind of differentiate themselves from being just an Uso and kind of get their own move sets as well. You can still do the splash, you can still do the super kicks, you can still do the the the, the, the Samoan spear, I suppose. Uh, to keep with the bloodline stuff but i would love to also see them kind of get create their own moves their own move sets their own signatures their own finishers to kind of have just to differentiate differentiate themselves a little bit more to, to kind of further their singles runs here before they inevitably get back together with roman and the bloodline and go on that route uh but that, and that's another reason i think gunther may win as well you could actually uh maybe even get some interference uh, from the bloodline even though i kind of hope we don't get that because they're supposed to be on separate shows now due to the draft and the brand split but we'll see what happens uh Jimmy Uso has not been seen in a while, too. Uh, I, I think he's actually injured at this point. Again, another injury. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I just don't feel like at the end of the day, Gunther's going to get the win here. But, again, can't wait for this match. Should be fun. The show obviously ended with Gunther and Jay Uso going uh, with nose to nose and a stare down to kind of bring the show to a close here. But uh, yeah, definitely building it up. Uh, make, again, I like the fact that this year's King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring tournaments at least have a little bit more uh, prestige to them, a little bit more importance uh, than they have had in years prior due to the Vince McMahon eras. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see that uh, these guys are actually getting, you know, it's going to be a good semifinal match. And I think the finals, uh, whoever they pick on the SmackDown and the Raw side, if I'm a betting man, I would probably put LA Knight versus Gunther. Uh, I, and then, of course, I hate that either guy would have to lose. I hate that Jay has to lose. Any of these guys that have to lose. I mean, Carmelo Hayes could get my Randy Orton, and that'd be a fight, a, fi a final four uh, between Hayes. Uh, L.A. Knight, uh, Gunther, and Jay, the, all those guys would be great and, and as the king of the ring. So it's, just, it's, it's it actually makes it unpredictable, and I like that aspect of it. But I just feel like at the end of the day, it's Gunther. It's always going to be Gunther in my eyes uh, just because I love him so much. So I'm happy to see that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it could be great no matter what way they go. And at least it's going to be entertaining uh, for sure, and I can't wait to see who they actually crown as the king and queen of the ring tournament. Here's a quick look at the men's brackets without Jay Uso advancing, obviously, because they didn't have it updated just yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, Gunther, Jay Uso, uh, the winner of Orton and Hayes, and the winner of uh, LA Knight and Tamatanga will be advancing here. So, like I said, fun tournament so far. I'm happy to see that they actually have a good tournament this year. Uh, but uh, with that being said, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown this week, pretty much uh, just your uh, King and Queen of the Ring tournament matches. Not a whole lot in the way of storytelling outside of maybe Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest furthering, possibly setting up a match between those two guys and, of course, setting up Logan Paul and uh, Cody Rose. Not a whole lot of storyline there, but at least there's some wins under Logan Paul's belt. And probably one of the bigger developments was the fact, of course, that Solo Sokoa said that he had talked to Roman Reigns, even though I think he's lying through his Samoan teeth. But at the same time, at least it's furthering a little bit there. Outside of that, mostly just good wrestling this week, a little storytelling here and there. But overall, not terrible, but not my favorite week of WWE. Uh, the, the thing about tournaments in WWE, sometimes they don't do a lot of storytelling with them. They're doing better with it this year than they have in years past. So in that regard, I think it's not bad. But at the same time, a little bit of a step down uh, from the quality going into WrestleMania as it always is after WrestleMania season. Uh, but all in all, I just I guess I've just been enjoying AEW a little bit more as of late, but uh, nothing against WWE. They're doing a much better job than they have in the past. So even though I wasn't super thrilled with this week, I was happy to see more wrestling on it. That right there is a big improvement. I'm happy to see that. I would just like to see them maybe integrate a little bit more storytelling during the in-ring action. That could be great. Uh, but all in all, maybe maybe, I, maybe it was just me. Maybe I just wasn't feeling it this week, and maybe next week I'll feel a lot better about it. But what did you guys think about this week's continuation of round one and the uh, beginning of round two, the quarterfinals of the King of the and Queen of the Ring tournament. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next week's WWE recap, everybody, check out my AEW recap on Thursday morning as well. Uh, take care and God bless.